thank you for having me here. I had such an amazing time in 2019 that I decided to do it again. Thank you, Josh. Um, so I'm currently with a healthcare startup company called Imagine Pediatrics. But as I talked to you about reviving this code base, it's actually about a completely different project I was doing um, before going to Imagine. So uh, my name is Jen. You can find me at underscore code Jen. I can thank my previous coworker Isaiah for helping me come up with that super clever name. <laughs> uh, so when I'm not, you know, working, as Ken mentioned, I am my kid's biggest cheerleader. And I like to joke that I run my own personal lift by mom service. My middle daughter, Andy, does not like when I text her and I'm like, lift by mom, we'll be arriving in 10 minutes. <laughs> I think it's clever, but whatever. So yes, I have a daughter who is now in the Air Force starting her software development career. So like Jamin, I have an 18-year-old who is another generation. Um, she's actually the third female engineer in my family. So pretty cool, third generation. Um, yes, and we have a little mini farm, so daughter has two goats and a lamb, and then my son is all the sports. <laughs> Enough about that. A little story time. So what might initially seem like it was mission impossible came to honestly be a wild success, much to the dismay of everyone from the beginning. So let's delve into the journey from my previous team that we took to identify a need to rewrite as well as the risks if we didn't, and the path to take ownership of our destiny within our code base. So let's imagine it all started out during the interview for that role. And I started asking questions like, what version of React Native are you on? Are you using REST or GraphQL? What are you using to manage state? Because I'm sorry, if I hear Redux, I'm like, run. <laughs> Um, so I started asking questions about the code base. And they said, we're not really sure. We're not mobile experts. We had a consultant you know, put this together for us. It was very clear they were unhappy with their MVP, but they also didn't know a lot about how it was set up. And they said, we'll be an open book. We'll send you a copy of the current code if you want to look at it before you accept this offer. And I was like, ah, OK. I don't really need to see it, like if they're that open, you know, because that's not typical for a company to open up their code base like that. But they were willing to sit down with me, let me see whatever I wanted. And I was like, ah, we'll figure it out when I jump in. So based on that open dialogue, I figured it could only go up from there. I joined the team and I began to dive into the code. So obviously I needed to start by reviewing that code. I really needed to get some clarity and figure out what the purpose was of the application in as much detail as possible. How did it interact on the mobile specific, but also the web and anything in the background that needed to happen? What dependencies were there? What was working well? What were they unhappy with? Because like I said, they were unhappy with their MVP. And a lot of it had to do with they were having bugs, they couldn't figure out, they didn't know how to address. So I needed to understand this from both the business perspective as well as from the existing engineers on the team. We had a super small team. Nobody had written the original code. <laughs> so I sat down with each team member and I started to document what I found. So some of the challenges. Outdated dependencies. React Native was already several versions behind. In my opinion, I love Expo, <laughs> their workflow. They didn't have that. Um, when it comes to best practices, the navigation was a mess. They weren't actually using routes for screens in several places. They were using state management, um, switching components. It was horrendous, <laughs> very scary. Unclear of what was being used, a lot of code duplications. There were secrets checked into the repository and more. <laughs> there was a lot of duplicated code and it was overly complex. There was zero documentation. The README was like the template that you get when you init your project. <laughs> I was like, how do I run this? <laughs> what do I need? Um, from that handoff, like I said, there was zero people that had originally worked on that project. So the team who was currently trying to support this application 
didn't necessarily understand why decisions were being made. It makes me think of Mark's talk earlier <laughs> in the um, ODD, you know, get blame. Like, we couldn't even ask, like, why was this done? I don't understand. Is there a reason this was here? Um, and then on that current team, there was really very minimal to no mobile expertise for them to really know where to start before I came in. Automation. I like to talk about Corbin because when I said, how are you guys deploying? And they were like, uh, he, Corbin pulled out this notebook and he had handwritten, like, well, I do this and then I do that and I do these things and then I upload it to the store. And I was like, oh my gosh, Corbin, what happens if you're not here? Um, he had the key store on his computer. I'm like, okay, we need to get this somewhere else so it's not just here, knowledge siloed. So we talked about the risks. What would happen if we chose to not embark upon this rescue mission? We had a single points of failure. Like I said, Corbin alone, just in the automation. We needed a bug fix. Like, if Corbin wasn't there, we were in trouble. Um, we had super long cycle times. It was hard to get new features out. The development, as we were all trying to understand how the code base was set up, it was really hard to make any changes without especially fear of breaking something. There was a lot of developer unhappiness. And as somebody new to the code base, I was like, I really don't want to work in this. I just, you know, it doesn't make me, doesn't bring me joy to work in this environment. And then finally, there was performance concerns. It was a pretty simple application, but to do updates, there was so much happening in there and it was very unclear in how to make that better at that time. So after getting a better understanding of where the app was currently at, I also wanted to understand where did the business want to take it? What new features did they want? What was missing from the current version that they felt like couldn't actually add to the new one or to the existing application? Um, you know, did they want some new native dependencies? Was it going to increase the complexity? Um, and what timeline did they desire to have those features in? Without having a good big picture and solid understanding of those elements, it would be more challenging to make suggestions for the path forward and to really get buy-in to say, hey, we should stop and rewrite. So then I made a plan. So with that good understanding of where we were at, where we wanted to be, I drafted up a plan and I reviewed it with the team, especially leadership. And one of the first questions that they asked was, wow, sounds great. How long is this going to take? And I think they expected me to say months because it had taken so long for them to get that original MVP. So when I said, ah, I think I could get this in two to four weeks, they were like, OK, sounds good. So we took on the mission. And there were several elements to this place. Um, you know, we had some minor changes and bug fixes that were already in flight, so we needed to balance that with how we moved forward in addressing that tech debt. But we started with documenting those user journeys and creating a plan for navigation, what screens we would need, as well as what common components we would need to reduce the code complexity and duplication as we made that shift. And we rolled a new project. <laughs> And I know that sounds crazy to some, but I literally was like, let's start fresh. Let's keep what we have over here and we'll literally roll a new repo, repo, new project, everything. And then we have what is there and we can easily make changes there as we work on this. And then we worked on configuration. We wanted to start with that very early and automation before in introducing any of the complexity because that's super you know, helpful to see that progress early on. I can see my app, I can see the icon, I can see the splash screen, I can you know, roll a, a version to test light and see like, oh, okay, you're making progress. And then I wanted to set up the baseline navigation to address the concerns from the current project. So we stubbed out screens and showed the tab nav, showed like, okay, if I click here, it's gonna go through these places, and then we were gonna work on the actual um, you know, functionality. Selectively copy code. So copy code with care, right? Don't just copy pasta, not understanding what it was doing, 
but making sure it was well documented, it was written for readability and understandability, as well as reusability, that's a lot of abilities, <laughs> and then improve it as we went. So adding in tests um, and at the right level. Then we set up the data access with better state management. This was one of the biggest messes, messes we were unraveling from the code base, and honestly, probably where we spent the most time. We created documents of like, this is how the data should flow, like I click here and it should do these things and it should call the API so that we can understand how we wanted to manage that. So from there, as a development team, we tested locally as well as on our devices before we turned it over to the stakeholders for them to go through with a fine tooth comb. We needed to feel comfortable and confident in what we were delivering and feeling like it was feature complete before we said, okay, go test it. It was really important, obviously, to not have regressions, to create a better experience for our users than they were currently getting. And although there were many changes that weren't visible to the business right away, over time they realized the value because of how quickly we were able to iterate and add new features, as well as release with a click of a button. So using Expo EIS and build configurations, they were able to say like, oh, I wanna cut a new release. Okay, click, I can do that and get action. So in summary, we reviewed what we had, we documented, we made a plan, we dove in, launched, and then we iterated, and we just were able to keep going. Thank you so much. It can be a little daunting to take on a rescue mission, but don't feel like you have to bite it all off at once. This is just one example of how we were able to do it. Take ownership of the code that you have and um, just create a better experience for yourself. <laughs>